Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and today we are going to make an oscilloscope in the back office. For this project, you'll need some breadboard, ideally one for the Raspberry Pi Pico, if that's what you're going to use, which I advise you use, because that's what we're going to use. I've got a little OLED screen, that's a little added bonus, so that we can make some sort of little voltmeter for it. Pin headers, if you need them, uh, some resistors, and of course, a bunch of hookup wire. So first things first, as we're going to be using this with breadboard, you're going to need to solder on your pin headers. I suggest you solder just one corner each, like so. And I'm going to do opposite corners, because why not? And then open up your breadboard packet, throw away the excess. Now it doesn't matter if you buy the specific breadboard for the Pico or not really, it's, it's just handy because you'll see here it does actually have the markings here for the actual Pico so it makes it a little bit easier but it's not really a big deal if you don't. So I'm going to pop that in right in the middle and that's why we only did one solder joint because you can see it's already a little bit stiff because they're not quite aligned but by the time you've pushed them in there they will be totally aligned so you can just go straight ahead and solder all the rest of those pins and I'm going to show you how to do a few while it's in situ here just make sure your soldering iron is nice and warm in fact I'm going to turn that slightly because I've got quite a big uh, soldering iron tip and I do know from seeing some of your uh, messages on discord that some of you do too and you can see there, you can just flow it in just like so. It doesn't really take up too much time. Don't dwell too long though, because you don't want too much heat to go down that pin and start melting your breadboard, because frankly, breadboards are generally made cheap and nasty enough, and for you to warp it or <laughs> distort it is going to be a big uh, nightmare for you down the line. So let's just hit it like that, and we'll do the other side. And once you've done that, if you've got an OLED screen like this, I suggest now's a good time to do that too. And I'm going to do a similar technique because I want those to be relatively flat. And it'll be neat if we get this working because, of course, if you're measuring things with a probe, the oscilloscope side of things likes to measure the things over time. Yeah, um, but at any one moment you are measuring voltage, so you could use this as a, a little voltmeter too. And of course, there are caveats to what you'll be able to read, but that's fine. So, we're ready to start wiring things up. The module itself provides power to this breadboard via the USB. They actually run at 3v3 and they are not 5 volt tolerant, so you have to be careful. Conveniently, though, they do give you the 5 volts from the USB line so that you can use that in your projects. But be very careful. Avoid feeding the 5 volt out from here into any of the GPIO because you may well damage that. We are going to start with our probe. So, our probe, as you may well be aware, is the end of your oscilloscope so it's the little pointy thing that you use actually to touch things and of course you do have an earth clamp too but we're going to add that later as well so you've got those two things so our probe today is going to be this piece of blue wire and the voltage from our probe is actually going to be read by the module via its analog to digital converter located on pin 26. So if you look up the instructions for this, I believe there's at least four pins with A to D capability. I, it's probably 28, 27, 26, 22, something like that. But uh, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure 26 is. So we're going to go with that. But as I mentioned earlier, we have to be careful because we don't want to put too much voltage in here. So there's two things we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do, and I have these 1K resistors, as just what I happen to have. You generally want to protect your equipment. So if you think of a regular oscilloscope, they have a seriously high um, rating on these. So you can see it's got a, at 10 times you can have 300 volts, at one time you can have 150 volts. Uh, and effectively that's because they have a big resistor in line because they don't want actually to measure any current. They only want to measure voltage so it protects that. I don't know what it is in a oscilloscope. It's probably a mega ohm or something like that. So we're going with um, a, a killer ohm. We have a 1K. So we're going to go from pin 26 
which is here, in fact, down to here. We're going to make everything down here on the board. So I'm going to make a little jumper pin that's going to go from pin 26 down to this track here on row 24. So we've got a spare bit of row 24 and on that I'm going to have this resistor and then this resistor I'm going to bend over. Now remember if you're making this you can actually transfer this onto VeraBoard and stuff when you're done. This is just a proof of concept really. So we're going to have a resistor that goes between row 24 and 25 like that and then from row 25 out that is our probe. Now you have to remember how breadboard works. You have these buses on the side, power buses which go top to bottom like this, then each row is wired like that and there's a separator in the middle. So this doesn't go all the way through, it just goes from here to here like that. So we're actually going from this probe wire, just to follow the circuit, goes along here to this resistor, then up from this resistor back to this green wire and then through the green wire and then into the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, you do have a problem with analog to digital converters in that you don't really like to leave the inputs floating. So that means when there's nothing connected to this end, it's susceptible to picking up radio noise and all sorts of things, you know, scrilling around the ether, and that'll mess up your results. So I always like to pull a clamp down on that, and I've got another 1K resistor, which we're just going to take from here. We're using up all the 1K resistors today. And we're actually going to go from pin 26, the other side of pin 26 here, look right there. You'll see it now momentarily. And I'm going to go to this negative rail here. Now that negative rail isn't actually hooked up at the moment, but don't worry, we will hook it up. So now we've got a resistor to the negative voltage rail. And we're going to make sure we do hook up that negative voltage rail from here. Just pop that in like that. And we're just going to pop that in to ground. So now our negative voltage rail is most definitely negative. And you can see I actually haven't hooked up the positive on the at the moment. I don't think we need a need for it, but we'll soon figure that out once we get there. Now, we do need that negative probe as well, or, or negative clamp that you see here on your oscilloscope to make sure you've got a common ground. And for that, I'm going to use this black wire. And it's, fortunately, it's not as long as that blue wire, but that's fine. It will work for our purposes. And we can just put it here because we hooked up that negative now. So now we've got a positive and negative, so we can probe away. Um, and just an interesting aside while, while I'm working through this, um, I reckon you could actually 3D print a really nice little case for this with a little probe already in the case, and you actually hold the whole thing and you just plug the USB in the back. I think that would be quite neat. So if you do have a go at that, please uh, feel free to send me a picture. I'd love to see that. And now while we're at it, we're going to wire in this OLED display because it would be neat if we can get this going as part of our project. And uh, let's find somewhere suitable. I mean, that would be actually quite nice down there. I might just have to shift things. That's the beauty of breadboard, of course. You can just shift things out of the way as you need it. Just make sure, of course, that the circuit still makes sense. Uh, you'll you'll be able to figure this out quite easy though it's not complicated circuit because see I've just moved everything down down here again I'll zoom in so you can see so the green is going to now rows 29 there is going to 29 30 and then back to the blue and you could you could just move the blue one along there keep it neat it's up to you now off screen though should fit in absolutely nicely there and it just about fits in it's quite long isn't it but it does Let's put it down one more. And there we go. So that's your OLED screen. Maybe a bit obscured. But you can always wrap these wires underneath like that. That's absolutely fine. We'll figure that out. Now you can see the OLED screen has ground, VCC, SCL, and SDA. So that means you need positive, negative, and it runs off I squared C. So it has two I squared C lines there which are data lines. So we'll have to figure out where we're going to hook those up for now. But I'm going to hook the red for power, the black for ground. Now, the problem is we know that we don't actually have on this side of the Pico any power or ground or anything for it. So we're going to have to get it from the other side. So that's really a good reason, of course, to have these buses hooked up because now we're going to put our ground across to here. And we're going to put our power across as well. 
remember we didn't actually hook up the power yet but we've put the power onto the bus so they're all hooked up onto those buses and then at the top we're going to take a I believe it's a 3v3 module I think there's some flexibility on these I think they're between five or three but it's fine and we're going to put a, a line from our three volts output there to our positive rail there so now the screen's powered up the screen will get power but it's not going to display anything because it's not connected to the bus and we got to decide which pins we want um, to use now I'm just going to make a guess at some but we will probably need to check that out later because sometimes on a lot of microcontrollers these things are reasonably configurable post fact and when you're using things like breadboard because you're not really um, it's not a permanent thing you, you've always got that opportunity to make a mistake and undo the mistake so I'm just rattling through my cable see if we can find a couple of nice colors so for the SCL I'm going to put orange SDA I'm going to put blue and I'm going to hit put SDA to pin zero here which I think is one of the spare serial ports if you're not using it and we're going to put another one here on the RX so that is our circuit and if I put power onto this right now it's not going to do anything so what we need to do now is take this over to the uh, computer and write some code so you can see on the screen Thony that is the kind of default uh, Raspberry Pi Pico uh, programming environment and it uses something called MicroPython which you may or may not be familiar with I was not particularly familiar with, but it's pretty easy to pick up so we are presented here with a blank screen so first we're gonna to have to bring in some libraries so we're gonna bring in from machine Oop, import the pin library and the I squared C library because we're going to need both of those things. Um, it might be useful to have a library for timing. So we're going to bring in the U time micro time library that allows us to uh, put in delays and things like that. And of course, the OLED uh, we have on there is one of the SSD 1306. And there is a library, fortunately for us, which is SSD 1306i squared C. So these are common libraries. You might have to go into Google and search for these if you want to, but we're going to do a few things. So the first thing I've put a comment here is let's begin. Let's go. Okay. So I want to set up a couple of things here. I want to set up the analog pin. So I'm going to say the AD see read pin we're going to set that to machine.adc so machine is a library and we're saying it's the adc pin and we want pin 26 and i will make a note because by the way in uh, micro python any kind of python it's all tab based there's no semicolons things like that but just in case you are curious i will leave a comment here which says that a read takes two microseconds therefore if you're very good at your coding you can probably get 500 killer samples a second so you could probably get a reasonable amount of data out of this bad boy if you want to um, right so we've done the basic stuff now so that's set the uh, analog input pin to what we want now we have to set the I squared C device now this is a little bit more complicated but basically you uh, just just follow follow what I'm writing so we're saying I squared C device zero we're saying the SDA pin um, we set that to pin zero we set the SCL pin to pin one on our board and we're gonna say the frequency to 40,000 Hertz there we go so it's it's a pretty old fast refresh that's the actual I squared C data bus configured. Now we're going to set up the screen driver, and the screen driver is SSD one three zero six underscore I squared C. Whew, bit of a mouthful, and we have to set the resolution. Um, I can't remember what these are. I think it's a sixty four by thirty two, um, but I will go back to that if it's not. And then we're saying use the I squared C bus, which we've just defined. So that's good, and. Um, 
as we're going to get started with everything we might as well initialize the OLED and we're going to just set it by filling it with blank and we'll say we are ready ready your OLED is ready and uh, don't worry I'll show you on camera this running OLED dot show and show is the command you want just to update the screen so little comment here update the screen so up to this point it's writing into a buffer and it isn't actually uh, doing anything I'm just going to save this called main.py I'm going to save it locally in Thony you can see it here on the left and um, what that will do then of course is uh, when you pitch show it just downloads it basically onto the screen and the screen will activate and if I hit run now let's see what happens oh syntax error line 14 of course because I forgot a double quotes and now it says no module no, 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 because now I have to go check the library and you can see it is working and I do have the word ready on the screen I did have to do a few things uh, I needed to adjust the actual screen size because apparently I'm using 128 by 32 display and I needed to actually install the library, the ssd1306.py um, onto the card. And you can do that by creating the library folders locally and basically saying upload and it'll upload it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So actually, if I do the same with the main, every time I power on this Raspberry Pi Pico, it'll run main.py. So that's cute. So that means now we actually do have um, the ready the screen works so let's just move on now so we're gonna have the ADC and uh, we're gonna say while true so we want true we want it to run around um, forever basically we're gonna set a voltage um, well let's say reading reading equals analog ADC read sorry we went the right pin here dot read and we want to read a the unsigned 16 bit so the actual adc on the raspberry pi pico is 12 bit but for convenience the driver in the um pico will expand that out to 16 bits obviously you're losing uh, four least significant bits that you can ignore and we could write here the value is and this can we we're putting it in a print statement so we can actually just uh, read it off the screen and we do have our reading And we could have a delay. I don't know how frequently we want to update it, but uh, just to give you um, an example, let's sleep for one second. So we're going to hit stop here at the top, save and play. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, there are some values being updated with a one second interval. And it's looking uh, reasonably interesting because I wouldn't have expected them to be honest to be jittering around so much so I'm gonna have a little check of the circuit board at some point but now let's just take that 3 volt um, the the probe and we're gonna attach that to 3 volts and see if we can get so there you go that's more like it so you can see now that when you actually apply the 3.3 volts you're getting a much bigger reading and then when we're removing it you're getting a tiny bit of noise so I think that's okay that's probably not too bad now the thing we need to do of course is to calibrate so we're going to have to do a little bit of maths and come up with a coefficient on this value so what you're seeing here is the 16-bit uh, number value but you're not seeing an actual voltage value after a little bit of mathematical magic, you can see here on line 7 a coefficient that is now being multiplied to the voltage reading on line 21, and that's converting it to uh, an approximate voltage. Pretty close approximate voltage, but approximate voltage nonetheless. And you will see there are many significant uh, digits there and they're pretty much noise so you can decide to round that up in your process and maybe two significant digits is enough for you but bear in mind that rounding function which you'll probably be rounding on the fly on line 21 is going to be costing you a little bit of cpu time and depending on your application you might want to just keep it as a raw value rather than a converted value 
but it's pretty close. And you can see now as I attach the 3 volt line, you're getting a 3.31 volts. We'll take it off and we'll add it onto the 5 volts line, and there you go, 5.17. Again, it's a combination of those resistors we've used and our little coefficient calculation. Although, to be honest, the coefficient calculation should be grounded in solid maths based on everything else, so it should be close. However, it's enough to allow us to continue. It's a good opportunity to show you the plotting function in the Thorny Suite. So I'm just replacing the whole voltage string with the word V because I wanted to run a little bit faster. I don't want it to delay time right into the screen. And you can see I've commented out the uTime.sleep so that we have a little bit more performance. We don't want that delay between iterations. And there's all the values at the bottom of the screen whizzing by. So what you can do is then just go up uh, to the menu and what you'll find in there is something called the plotter. If you scroll down, and it's anal analogous to the Arduino plotter, and it basically will interpret any numbers it sees on the screen in a CSV format and displays them in a nice plot. So that's a little bit like your oscilloscope plot right there. Um, now, the problem with MicroPython, it's not very fast. So if you were to use Arduino, for example, you can get this to run up some serious speed. Um, Python's interpreted language rather than a compiled language, so it's not quite as fast. However, you get the idea. You can certainly see the trace on the screen there. Um, I'm just going to play here with the values, like to give it a little bit of a, a sleep time there. Let's uh, give it a chance for the serial buffers to, to empty. And actually, look, you can see that actually has improved it somewhat. Um, and as I move our probe around to the 3 volts and to the 5 volts, you'll be able to see the trace on the screen. And it's not um, amazingly vertical. It's not a square wave, as you'd probably expect, because there are, it's, it's not running particularly fast. It's not sampling particularly fast. However, it does, it does a job, and if you were doing some uh, analysis of some communications on things, you would see this line twiddling up and down, and for your particular application, that might be enough. However, the goodness doesn't end here, because we do have other options in how we can view this. When I started tinkering on this project, it reminded me of something I saw on Hackaday. And on Hackaday, they have a better serial plotter. So this was designed to replace the plotter in the Arduino suite, which I believe Thony is copying or based on. So uh, if we actually download this, we should get enhanced capabilities. So it has multiple uh, plots. You can change the colors. You can do all sorts of things. Load data, save data, uh, manipulate it in certain ways. And of course, which is quite nice for us, is to apply smoothing. And you can see that project on Hackaday. Just type in better serial plotter and you can fire it up. It just looks like this. It's just a plain executable. And uh, you may well have to shut down Thony because you can see here Thony's eating the serial port. And if you want that serial port to continue to work, of course, um, make sure you save it. Upload to the Raspberry Pi. Upload the, sorry, <laughs> upload the main.py to the Raspberry Pico. Then shut down the Pico and then, of course, open up your better serial plotter. And let's find that serial port in the top left corner. And of course, we need to set that board rate correctly as well. And once you've cho chosen it, you can see actually it's already reading data at 9600, which is wrong. But so it makes me wonder with these USB uh, serial chips, actually the board rate probably doesn't matter, depending on the chip, of course. But you can see now it's running the trace but we can't see the data right now. But you can see the data coming in on that top left corner. So what you need to do is you need to drag and drop uh, onto the plot the actual data channels you want. So imagine if you're using an Arduino for this, actually, where it's a bit more performant. You could have three channels of data. If you've got GPIO, you could have many channels of data, bearing in mind, though, you're only going to get digital data on the GPIO. And that is how it looks. You can see it right there. Now use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Zoom in and out until you can find your trace. You can drag the the trace as well to move it up or down. And there is an auto scale option to get everything to fit in for you. And as you twiddle, twiddle the actual probe pin on those voltage lines, you can actually just see it right there, just poking up and down, which is, to be honest, uh, incredibly useful. And if you're doing any sort of project where you have some data logging or you're, um, you, you want something to actually uh, trigger some IOs and you're not sure if that IO is working while you're you know, working on your Thony or Arduino suite, 
you can have that hooked up on a separate piece of uh, Raspberry Pi Pico onto your other board and use it for analyzing what is happening on your main board. And of course, it would be nice to see that OLED doing something. So you can see in the while loop, I've added the OLED.fill text screen stuff, OLED.show lines. So that's effectively going to render the same voltage and things we're seeing onto that OLED. However, if we do that, it's going to kill performance all the time. So if we do want to use this as a data logger, we're going to be absolutely stuffed. So I'm going to just use one of the inputs and I'm using pin 10. I'm calling it button. You can see line seven. And that will just allow me to move a jumper across back and forwards. And then as I apply that for jumper, you'll see the uh, system will slow down, but it will actually start updating the voltage on the device itself, which is useful as a little portable multimeter. Those of you with eagle eyes will see though I have changed the code on lines 8, 9 and 10. And what I've done there is actually modify the pulse width modulator um, hardware on the Raspberry Pi Pico to actually output a signal so that we actually have a test signal available to use. So we have now a pin that is generating a hardware pulse width modulator. So it doesn't use CPU uh, as far as I'm aware, but you now you can use that to calibrate anything. Um, so you can just hook up your probe to that output pin and you're getting your, I'm going to put inverted commas, square wave. I know it doesn't look particularly square, but I think a lot of that's to do with tearing. As that's moving across the screen, I think it's giving it a look like it's a slope, whereas it probably is pretty vertical on there. And within this interface, of course, you can uh, adjust uh, various parameters and just play with it. Um, have a look, though, to see what the hardware can do. I mean, I've just randomly punched in some numbers for that pulse width modulator, but if you want some specific values, you, you can. And if you want to add a second channel, for example, you can see you just literally copy and paste some of these same lines and go ahead and do that. You can just add them down below, get a second channel running in that while loop, and you've got two streams of data to play with. I'm sure I can hear you out in the ether saying this is all very well and good, but can you actually use it for something? Well, yes, I can. I do have here, for example, a bench power supply, and I'm curious on the voltage output from it. I have it currently set to, let's see, two, well, it's, it's just, see the voltmeter's jittering around. It's 1.49 volts. So I would like to know what uh, it actually is. So I'm holding that there. I'm gonna put my probe on the end here. And we are reading 1.52 volts. Now, is it actually 1.49 volts or is it 1.52? volts and this is of course where our independent adjudicator comes in <laughs> and tells us that it's 1.488 volts so i guess we were a little bit off on that one weren't we let's see what were we reading again and in fact, if we want to hold the reading, you can just take this pin out while we're running. There we go. So we have it static on the screen. We were reading 1.52. So a little bit of calibration needed. However, I do think we're quite close. We're in the ballpark, really, for most things. So I hope this has been a useful little primer to help you on your journey of data logging, microcontrollers, data acquisition, voltage reading, whatever you want to do. Um, it's the essential building block for so many projects and so many um, things in the industry are really just based on these fundamentals. If you think of an electric vehicle, you've got lots of sensors, you've got lots of door switches. Um, apart from sort of reading GPO and ADC, there's a uh, there's not necessarily a lot else that you need to do in the cabin. You, it's re literally reading voltages and switching things it's, and making decisions based on those readings. So learn this stuff and get going with it. And uh, really, I really look forward to seeing your uh, pictures in Discord or Patreon or wherever you want. So I'll, uh, you want to show me your creations. Um, I suspect you could build this into a nice 3D printed little tiny handheld thing. And that would be very cute. And if you do load up the Arduino, please feel free to comment down below and show us your performance gains doing that. Because you can certainly uh, increase this rem to be remarkably fast via that route. And you should be looking at quite clean traces at that point. So hopefully that's useful for you. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. And as ever, thank you for watching.